Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're at the Balknantirarian Trail Centre in West Wales. This place is home to some amazing woodland, great views and of course some epic mountain bike trails. And that's why we're here. Today we're riding the Red Summit Trail. This can be described as a demanding route with some technical single track descents and long climbs. It promises a variety of interesting riding in a spectacular environment. So what are we waiting for? The trail from the car park starts with a climb. It's only about five minutes to the first piece of single track, but this is nowhere near the longest or hardest climb on the trail. The route card says this trail is about 20 kilometers long, which would take a couple of hours to complete. So you're gonna need a decent level of fitness. Dropping into the first piece of trail, everything was good. But as we came to find out, this ride was gonna be anything but straightforward. This is the first time I've ridden this trail, so I don't really know what to expect. The trail guide promises steep flowy and technical single track trails, so I'm really hoping the summer trail delivers on this promise. This first section weaves its way down, cutting a nice line across the hill. There's a decent amount of speed and the trail flows really well, assisted by a few tight corners every now and then. Now, before we rode this trail, we had a spin on the blue trail as a bit of a walk. This video is already up on the channel, so go and check this one out if you want to see what it's all about. So, because we've already ridden a trail here, we've got a good idea of how these trails move. But there are still plenty of surprises. I mean, I definitely wasn't expecting this. Whoa, look at that view. It's a long way down. That's right, it's a long way down, because you're riding along the edge of a pretty steep cliff edge. Truth be told, it's an amazing view. But this is also an amazing piece of single track descent. So I decided to keep my eyes firmly fixed on the trail ahead. At a few minutes long, this is a great descent to start the trail, and it bodes well for the descents to come. This whole section is a fast flowing line to the bottom of the hill, complete with a few small rock drops and some interesting corners. If you're someone new to riding red trails, then this is all rollable. But for the more experienced riders, you can really capitalize on the speed and use the trail to your advantage. Trails like this always have hidden kickers and fun little extra elements if you know where to look. And this trail is no different. If you know where you're going, you could have plenty of fun on a trail like this. After making it to the end of the first downhill, we were buzzing from this descent. So far, the Summit Trail is looking good. The next couple of trail sections are a slow uphill pedal on fire roads and single track. As far as ascending goes, these sections were fine. There's nothing too technical to contend with. The route takes you past some nice scenery and it reminds you how great it is to be in the outdoors. But once our little pedal fest was coming to an end, we headed into another long descent. I love these woodland descents. Trails like this are so different to pristine bike park trails. Here the surface is rocky and narrow and the terrain changes with the weather. On trails like this you can still find jumps and features but you sometimes have to get a bit more creative. With the added aspect of being able to choose how you approach a feature you can take different lines at different speeds. Usually at somewhere like a bike park the features are designed for a certain speed and there's only one way to ride it. Out here you can ride to your strengths and play around as much as you like. The more you ride different types of trails and features the better rider you become. Of course, this is nowhere near the fastest or most technical section of downhill on the trail, but it's still an enjoyable adventure through the woods. Perfect for hardtail and e-bike riders. For the next couple of sections, you're again on fire road and flatter single track. For the most part, this was pretty easy going. There are a couple of easier, more gentle descents, but it's better to treat these sections as more of a sightseeing soiree than a technical blast along the trail. But with that in mind, some of the wider tracks provided a bit more of a challenging climb than your standard fire road. Once you make it up the hill, you roll your way along this section of the summit trail. At first, the terrain is a gentle downhill and you can ride along happily chatting away. But then, things crank up a notch. This section is a fast blast along the track, which happens to have some really fun but sketchy terrain. We're talking rock slabs, gravel, loose rock and slippery ditches. With that in mind, keep your eyes on Jim who's up in front. Oh, he's down. Are you alright? He found one of those slippery ditches by the side of the trail. Yeah, that's pretty slippery. It may not be single track, but sections like this deserve your respect because they're very unpredictable. And that wasn't the last of it. The rocks and loose gravel are a constant on this part of the trail, 
But don't let that put you off, because this bit is great fun. Interesting riding, great views, and who doesn't like going fast? Like I said before, this isn't the kind of thing you find at a bike park, and it takes a different set of skills to ride it, but it's definitely worth a visit. Heading back into the woods, we made our way along to one of the best and longest descent sections on the whole trail, called Mask of Zorro. Here we go. From here, you literally ride from the top of the hill to the bottom of the valley. Riding it in one go is a sustained effort for any rider, but it's a great piece of trail. This upper part is another winding woodland roller coaster filled with flowing turns and small rolls. Very different to navigating the wide open gravel descents that we've just been doing. This upper section in the forest was really good fun and we can't wait to ride it all the way down to the bottom. But unfortunately for us, we were soon stopped in our tracks by tree felling. Ooh. Now, this section of Masca Zorro has been closed for felling for a very long time. Jim and Lisa came here a year ago and the same sections are still closed today. And before it opens again, this whole section will need some pretty extensive repairs. Masca Zorro is a long red section down in the left hand corner, with the main trail being closed in this area here. Now, we were told by a local that we could navigate around this bit on fire roads and drop back in at the open section of trail here. So we did. And it turns out that our rather long and arduous detour to get here was well worth it. And we were stoked to be riding again. Down here, the trail continues its way along the hillside on the edge of a rather steep bank. For me, this section has real Quim Khan vibes to it. Now, as you're enjoying this bit of the trail, I want to talk to you about something very serious. It strikes me as odd that this trail has been out of commission and sections not repaired for over a year. We also found it strange that the visitor center and toilets were closed, despite signs saying that they're open daily. And the plot thickens, because according to some locals, it's been this way for the last couple of months. Now to me, this seemed odd, but it turns out that things were worse than we thought. A few days after we rode this trail, NBR released an article saying that three Welsh trail centers may be closing for good due to a lack of funding. Yina's last visitor center, Cody Brennan, and here. This is devastating news. Now, I don't have any insider information on this, but the visitor center here has already been closed, so I would say that things don't look good for trail centers like this. Now, I'm not gonna get into the politics of how and why this has happened, just to say that if you wanna ride these trails, your time might be running out. But anyway, that's enough of that. Successfully down the Mask of Zorro, we started our way along the fire road. From here, you then have the biggest climb on the trail. This takes you from the bottom of the Mask of Zorro, all the way up the fire road to the top of the hill again. And let me tell you, this one is a bit of a slog. Made all the more difficult by the fact that my dropper post isn't working. It's not staying up or down, and we couldn't fix it at the roadside. So we painfully slogged our way up the biggest climb on the hill. But once we got to the top, we were rewarded with a little bit of descending. Uh, here we go. Coming in hot, after all the climbing, this section was a breath of fresh air. Although the legs are definitely aching by this point. Sprinkled with a few more interesting lumps and bumps, this is a fun little section of trail. It moves nicely around the trees and it's good to be descending again. Very different to the long swooping trails of Zorro or the gravel single track, this again shows the variety of trails available here. And they're all great in their own way. But as fun as this short section is, this is just the warm up for the final descent back down to the car park, which starts here. This final section is sessionable from the car park with only a short climb. And this section is definitely worth sessioning. It starts off flowing at the top of the hillside before cutting down to the right parallel to the last section of the blue trail. With a few small drops, plenty of rollers and loads of tight bump corners, this session has plenty to keep you entertained. Now we're riding this trail in January, and if you know anything about Wales in January is that it's cold. And one thing that cold likes to do is drain battery life. Which for me means that as I was riding this trail, the last battery in my GoPro suddenly died. Lucky for us, Jim was still rolling. So we join him on his privateer as he gives us his perspective on the rest of this descent. And it looks like he isn't hanging around. With great views, janky rocks and decent speed, this section of trail is brilliant. Now, this footage is taken using an old GoPro Hero 8, which has slightly poorer image quality than the more up-to-date models. As I'm watching this footage, it almost looks sped up, but let me assure you, this is just how Jim rides. He goes full tilt and takes no prisoners. 
For intermediate riders and above, this red trail is a great option, with some really interesting sections. And just as the first descent of the trail was a great introduction to the red route, this is a fitting finale. So all the features on this section of trail are rollable, but as you can see, a bit of speed definitely makes things more interesting. With this bit being sessionable, it's definitely one of the more popular sections of downhill, and it's easy to see why. So it's gutting that trails like this may not be around for much longer, which is a real shame. So my advice would be to come here and ride them while you can. Even if this centre doesn't close, you should still come here and ride this anyway. Like I said before, my video of the blue trail is already available on the channel if you want to go and see what that's all about. But there's also a black trail here too if you want a bit more of a challenge. So all in all, the summit trail has a good mix of exciting downhill, scenic riding and its fair share of uphill. It's a classic Welsh trail loop. So as Jim nears the trail centre, that's the end of the trail. Thanks for watching today, remember to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.